Here it is, man. We finally get to see a little small glimpse of the NBA 2K24 builder. And here it is. Here I got it on the screen. So I'm going to go through it. And I'm going to dissect it just a little bit. I'm also going to go through some news with y'all that, you know, the courtside report put out about new badges and, you know, new ways to progress your badges throughout the year. So look. It's gonna get interesting. It's gonna get spicy. So make sure y'all lock in with the kid. But anyways, look. Let's take a look here. Let's dissect this a little bit. So we looking at a shooting guard that's 6'4", 205 pounds, 6'6", six, six wingspan, right? And so far, this build has a 90 overall. So the potential is 99. So this build right here is not even maxed out. So you can still add more attributes to this. And the fact that you can add more attributes to this kind of like scares me because in reality this bill it looks like it was kind of like half-ass made and somebody just put attributes anywhere and it's not really specified to something specific so i think you're gonna have more more uh flexibility but also a lot of people that tested the game in nba 2k community they said that the builder is a lot more straight but just by looking at this picture right here I feel like you got some flexibility to work with. I don't know, man. We're going to have to see when the game comes out on September 8th. But nonetheless, look. Let's take a look at the right side right here. Look. We see that there's some badges that came back. For instance, like clamps. And we see new badges that are in the game that were implemented. For instance, like 94 feet. One of the new badges that are in the game. But they did say, Mike Wang did tweet that 24 new badges were added to the game. Which is extremely crazy because we already had a lot of badges. And now to add 24 on top of the badges that we had is extremely insane. Don't get it confused though. They did remove a lot of badges as well from the game that are no longer in there. It's right here on the screen. Uh, these are the badges that were removed from the game that it is confirmed by Mike Wang that are no longer here. Let's continue to dissect this, man. So you got all badges and you got relevant badges. I'm assuming relevant badges means like relevant badges to this specific category. And then you got all badges, basically seeing all the badges this build can possibly unlock. You see here that it's a little bit different how it was in previous years. So you see that it is divided into tiers now. So you got tier S, tier A, tier C, and I'm assuming there's a tier B if you keep scrolling down. But nonetheless, it's a little different from what we're really used to. So this is pretty exciting. The builder, you know, I'm gonna spend some time in there and I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna spend some time in there too. First set of news that it says here on the courtside report, there's different ways of creating your build now. So you can either start your build from scratch or you can select your favorite NBA player as a template and start off with those type of attributes. I think this is pretty interesting and this is pretty dope for the community, especially if you want to play like your favorite NBA player. You can finally pick their template and go ahead and run at the park. So it's kind of like a replica build of how they were making in 2K23. The next section is talking about badges. So basically, as I, I was explaining before, is badges are defined based on how you play. So the way that you play is the badges that you're gonna get. If you like to fade a lot, you're gonna get fading badges. If you like to shoot a lot of threes, you're gonna be a shooter, you're gonna get a lot of shooting badges. So make sure that the build that you make is specified to you specifically. And here we have some of the new badges that were added to the game in the scoring section. So you have float, uh, float game, scooper, bunny, spin cycle, two step, Precision Dunker, Hook Specialist, Post Fade Phenom, Open Looks, uh, Spot Finder, Whistle, Free Points, Bulldozer. These are all the new badges that were added to the game. So I'm not gonna go through every single definition. I'm not gonna explain every single badge because obviously there's 24 new badges. We're gonna be here until tomorrow if I'm sitting here explaining badges. So if you read the details on these, you're gonna be pretty excited to try some of these out. So for ball handling and passing, if you're a playmaker, they added some new badges for the playmakers and the dribble heads. So they added relay passer, touch passer, big driver, blow by, physical handle, speed booster, triple strike. And so some of these badges are pretty interesting as well. Make sure you guys go ahead and look through these definitions and check out what these badges 
specify to and what interests you as a player. Defense, they have said that it's been a huge improvement this year. So see, these are some of the badges that they added to defense, which are fast feet, right stick ripper, immovable forcer, and 94 feet, which are pretty interesting badges. I want to touch on uh, fast feet real quick because it's a talked about badge a little bit on Twitter. Uh, this badge right here is more so like quick first step for defenders, which is pretty interesting because now you're not going to get blown by as much if you have this badge equipped. Of course, we got to see when we play the game exactly how it worked and how effective the badge is. But nonetheless, they, uh, they did implement more defensive badges for those players that are big on defense. So, all right, guys. So, I'm going to go over this section right here with you guys. This is something new that they implemented in the game, and it's called Badge Perk. So, basically, what it is is a perk that you can equip to a specific badge. And depending on the perk that you equip to that badge, it's basically the level progression of that badge is going to be determined by that perk that you equip to it and of course your gameplay. So let's go over some badge perks so you guys can get a little bit better understanding of exactly what I'm talking about. So you have overdrive increases badge level progression in games, immunity slows badge uh, level pro uh, regression in the game, drills seven increases badge level progressions in team practice facility, scholar a risk slash reward perk that gives a significant increase in badge level progression for PvP games. Finished with a high teammate grade. Winner's circle high uh, risk and reward perk that gives added boost in badge level progression for PvP games that result in a win for the user. However, you receive zero progression for the badge if you lose the game. And then the last one that they have is high risk. Perk increases badge level progressions for PVP game with bad usage, but accelerated regression with lack of usage. This is a rotational season prize. Those are some of the perks right there that they've added to the game that you can equip on specific badges. If you feel like one badge is taking longer than the other one to progress, you can equip that perk onto that badge and basically helps that badge you know, boost up to the Hall of Fame level, gold level, whatever level you can get the badge to. It's, I think it's pretty dope. It's gonna be a little bit interesting on how you manage these uh, badge perks. All right, so this section right here is pretty interesting as well. This is something new that they added to the, to the badge progression. So this one's a little bit different from the perks. So this one is performance multipliers is more so like completing quests in the game. They added four different performance multipliers and they have grade A student, winner takes all up to the challenge and floor setters. Grade A student is pretty much self-explanatory. Winner takes all in games finished with a win badge level progression is accelerated for all the quick badges. So if you win, you basically, your badges accelerate a lot faster. Up for the challenge, in games played against tough opponents, badge level progression is accelerated for all the quick badges. Floor setter is very very interesting because for setter you have to select it once the season starts and you get 18 of them so basically what floor setter does is you get to select specific badges that you don't want to drop so like for instance if you don't do a certain thing for a certain amount of time that badge starts to come down slightly and the progression starts to you know lower so with floor setter Basically what it does, it locks it in at the level that you want it locked into. So if you want it at silver or gold or hall of fame and you do not want that badge to fall below that level, you will equip one of those badges in one of your floor setter slots. I don't know if that, got, if that made sense to you guys, but drop a comment down below and let me know if that made any sense to you guys. Because it's, I mean, it's pretty simple, but until we get the game in our hands, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to understand what's really going on. So that's all the news for you guys today. I hopefully, I was able to clarify some things. Hopefully you guys are as excited that I am to play NBA 2K. We are literally about two weeks away from drop day from September 8th, baby. But you already know what I say. If you're feeling under the weather, we're shooting over those, you dig? And it's your boy, New York, and I'm out. Peace.